welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. These are the most important lessons I have ever taught because we are in the last days. People are deceived today more than ever before. They do not know what is going to happen to them at death. Everyone must face these truths. Are you ready to meet your Lord? We are going to learn all that God has for you to know concerning your spiritual life so that you will not have any doubt that you are going to go to a place that God has prepared for you. And in this place, there is no more sorrow, no more deaths, no more tears, no more pain. So this is the most important lesson. And you must tune in these next few weeks. It is impossible for me to get this in to you in these few weeks. And you must know that you are ready because there is a place called hell. We're also going to see the comparison of hell and heaven. And if you have not been born again at death, it is too late. So God's word teaches us what it is for people to be in spiritual death, spiritual darkness. You see, blindness, physical blindness, is nothing compared to spiritual blindness. So here's what God's Word says about spiritual blindness, and we're going to see a lot more about these. He says in Isaiah 59, verse 6, now he's talking about the ways of the evil man. He says, the way of peace they know not. You see, the wicked are like the troubled sea. They have no peace. There is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Verse 9. Therefore is judgment far from us. This is what they say. Neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. Verse 10. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as it's in the night. This is the darkness of the world today, people that don't know Christ. We are in desolate places as dead men. This is what the world is like today. But we can have perfect peace and we can know that we are to live for Christ. And this is what you're going to learn in these next few weeks. And you must know that God's Word says also in Isaiah 59, beginning in verse 2, For your iniquities have separated between you and God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. You see, this is what people that are blind and don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, spiritually blind, they can't hear these truths. Let's pray. O oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee and praise Thee for these most important lessons in these last days that we're living. We pray that Thou will open the spiritual eyes of every person that is hearing these truths. Prepare them to be brought out of darkness into light 
out of the power of Satan unto thee. And we thank thee for what thou art going to do through these lessons, that thou art going to bring 100 fold. And we're thanking thee because it's not thy will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And this is the confidence we have. If we ask anything according to thy will, we know thou dost hear, and we shall have the petitions we require of thee. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. Rebuke this awful enemy today. Give us victory over all satanic powers, over all demonic spirits. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. So the first thing we're going to learn is the beautiful lessons about this book. This is a spiritual book for a spiritual people. You cannot know this book apart from being born again. The Bible is a spiritual book for a spiritual people. The Bible is a book to answer all of life's questions. You see, we turn to this book every day for directions, for guidance. This is what he wants for us as true believers. And this book meets all of our needs. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This book is the unfolding of his divine plan and purpose for every true believer. If we will open our hearts and receive this gift of eternal life and forgiveness of sin. This book was written over a period of 1600 years by 40 different holy men of God that he gave these words to. This book is a living book, the only living book in the world. And holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. They wrote it and God gave them the message. God breathed this message and it takes the blood of Jesus Christ. This is the blood of Jesus Christ goes through this book. Every page of this book, his blood is in this book. And it is the blood of Jesus Christ that gives us power for the word of God, the gospel. That is the power of this gospel that we teach. And then we see it is also that we are to get the best out of this book and this study of God's Word, this is how that we are to give out the Word of God. And it is the blessings of the revelation of Jesus Christ. To get the most out of this book, I must know the Holy Spirit is teaching me all things. He's the best teacher then after I'm born again, I cannot ex even receive blessings unless I'm worshiping in spirit and in truth. The Holy Spirit has to have the Word of God. They can't be separated. Jesus Christ came to make known and manifest the Father. The Holy Spirit came to make known and manifest Jesus Christ. That's the revelation that the Spirit of God teaches us. And you have to know the Word of God before the Spirit of God can work. This is a living, listen at this, this is a living message, a divine living message from the heart of a living, loving, life-giving God. This is a divine message. And this means I have to have divine conception. This book opens with the fact of God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I look at the heavens today and they declare the glory of God. This is the de declaration of the creation. This is the beginning and this is the source of all that this world and all the things that we see 
were created by him. And then we have fellowship with him as true believers. Then, since he's a source of all the world's goods, what am I to do? Well, creation is God expressing what he is. Expressing what he is. You see, we must know he's the creator. We must know Jesus Christ is a living word. And we must know first and the greatest revelation of all from the beginning to the end that God is love. That God is love. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, God has already given Christ to the world. For God so loved you. But each individual must appropriate him by a personal act to get the personal advantage of this gift. Now you know that he's a gift from God. And you know that you can do nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing to earn salvation. Because God's word teaches, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. This is the only way that anyone can get to heaven, is receiving this gift. And we don't deserve it. We deserve an eternal hell. But our, all of our sins were laid on him. So God's word says in Romans 8, 9, If any man have not the Spirit of God, he is none of his. He is none of his. Justification from all things is offered now by faith in Jesus Christ. This is a blessed message of the gospel of grace. This is the blessed message of the gospel of grace. Forgiveness of sins and a perfect justification from all things. Now this is what we see here. Justification means I've been declared righteous by God. This is all sins. All means all and that's all all means. You see, we see in this Bible verse, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. All means all, that's all all means. So here I have his righteousness, and I have been declared righteous, and I have a robe of righteousness that covers me. I am hid with Christ in God. Then I know that being justified by faith we have peace with God. This is the peace that passes all understanding. Do you know this peace that God is love? And no matter how far afield you go in this life in deepest sin, he died to save you. He died to save you. When God created the heavens and the earth in the very beginning, the earth was a ball of light. A ball of light. The revelation of the very nature of God. For God is light. God is love and God is light. This is the only way that any person can get to heaven. And we see in Ezekiel 43 verse 2. Ezekiel 43 verse 2. And... Behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. Then Ezekiel 10, verse 4. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherubims and stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. 
You see, Jesus Christ is the glory of God. We're to be changed from glory to glory. From glory to glory as a true child of God. And when we give out this word, the glory of God is being manifested. And then Ezekiel 10, 1. I looked and behold the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims. There appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone as the appearance of the likeness of his throne. You see, here we see his attributes are his divine perfection. He is perfect. He never sinned. And when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in our bodies, we are to be holy as he is holy. Now, we're going to talk about these because these are the most important lessons for you to understand what happens to you when you are born. You're born a sinner. Every person in Adam all die. In Christ all live. Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the ground, the dust of the earth, a lump of matter. That was his body that God created him. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. God is the only one that can give life. That is his spirit. And man became a living soul. This is the soul of man. Now, when we talk about this, you must understand that you must understand what it is. The Spirit of God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, we're going to learn this today, and we'll get into more of it in these next few weeks. But the body of man touches the material things through the five senses of sight, of hearing, smell, hearing, and taste, and touch. But now the soul uses the five senses of the body as its agents for its self-expression and communion with the outside world. The gates of the soul are imagination, conscience, memory, reasons, and affections. That is what happens to the soul. And you do not have a spirit until you are born again by the Spirit of God. So the Spirit, now let me tell you what you're like. God's Word plainly teaches this for every person that's living. There is no difference with God. He loves us all the same. So Paul was called to go to the Gentiles to open their eyes, to open their eyes. This is what he was called to do, and they were to be delivered. This is the most important. Listen at this Bible verse is what everybody is like. Every person that is listening needs to write this down, Acts 26, 18, to turn their eyes from darkness. Now, this is a natural man, and from the power of Satan unto God. So here, the spirit, the spiritual faculties of the spirit. This is the spirit receives impressions of outward and material things through the soul and the body. The spiritual faculties of the spirit are faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. You have no hope until you become a child of God and receive the Spirit of God. You have no faith. You have no reverence for the things of God. You cannot even pray to Him because you can't call Him Father until you become a child of God. And you cannot worship Him because we worship in spirit and in truth. Now, in man's unfallen state, You've got to, you've, I'm going to read these over again. The next few weeks, every one of these must be given to every person in this whole universe. 
in man's unfallen state, the spirit of man was illuminated from heaven. But when Adam sinned, Sin closed the window of the spirit. You see, he was made in the image of God. We just read that, body, soul, and spirit. And God pulled down the curtain on the chamber of the spirit. And this became a death chamber. So every person that is born is going to die apart from being born again by the Holy Spirit, divine conception. And this remains so in every unregenerate heart until the life and light giving power of the Holy Spirit floods that chamber with the life and light giving power of the new life in Christ. Now, we see then, while the natural man cannot understand spiritual things, he cannot understand them until his spiritual nature has been renewed. We go to John, 1 John, and this is for every person that don't know Christ this is important for you to understand this. Now, this is what God's Word says, and this is satanic, and I want you to know that Satan deceives you as a as an unsaved person because these are the truths of God's Word. But Satan twists God's Word into a lie. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So in 1 John 2, 22. So this is a message. You must write these down. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is? Is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. And he says in 1 John 2, now this is the Antichrist, little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrist. This was when he wrote this book. There were many. And then back in verse 23 of 1 John 2, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. And then 1 John, once again, verse chapter 5 and verse 12. Well, let's read verse 11. And this is the record that God hath given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Now this is the only way you can know your child of God is through the Word of God. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. This is so plain that every person that's listening must be born again by the Spirit of God because what did Christ do? He went to the cross to die for us. And this is what he said. He did this willingly. I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. He died willingly for you. Now, when he died, he had to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You see, God had to forsake his son for those hours of darkness where he hung on the cross 
and all of our sins were laid on him. If you do not receive the Lord Jesus Christ as, as Savior, at your death you have no spirit. You only have a soul that goes to a place of torment. The demons of hell meet your soul at death. After death, it is too late. For a child of God, Christ died instead of me. I have the Holy Spirit. My Holy, the Holy Spirit and my soul. This is divine conception. The Spirit of God comes into my soul and makes me alive. And I become a trinity. Before this, you are not complete. And you cannot worship a triune God apart from having a trinity. For a believer, your soul and spirit, the gates of glory, you go right into the gates of glory. There is no pain in death for a true believer. And there is no fear in death. You're absent from the body and present with the Lord. And we will read these verses again next week. So today, I'm going to start to read this. And I know I won't get it all in, but I want you to do what this says. But the spirit of the natural man is not only darkened, his will stands as a guard at the door. And prevents the entrance of the Holy Spirit. And it is not until your will surrenders through the power of the Word of God. And the Word of God that the Holy Spirit can enter. And take up his abode in the spirit of man. Bring your precious one by one to the place of way I still do